Hello, my name's Rachel and I work for Step 2 Young People's Health. In this video, we're going to be looking at two quite serious topics, child exploitation and female genital mutilation. So to start with, we've got some definitions. There are two main types of child exploitation. You've got child sexual exploitation, sometimes called CSE. This is when children are being used by criminal gangs. They are sexually assaulted or raped, often by numerous men. The men will pay the gang for this sexual experience. You've also got child criminal exploitation or CCE. Children and young people are used by criminal gangs. They often move drugs, hide weapons or take part in criminal behaviour for the gang due to the fear of threats or violence. And female genital mutilation or FGM. This happens in some countries. Women and girls have their genitals cut or sewn short. We're going to start with child sexual exploitation. So the children are being groomed by gang members. So that might take the form of you finding yourself in a relationship with an older person and they keep buying you gifts. They might keep giving you cigarettes and alcohol. They take you on little shopping trips. They treat you overly nice. They're giving you gifts that you haven't deserved. It tends to start out as a relationship with them calling themselves the person's boyfriend, making that young person feel special. Unfortunately, it turns quite nasty because the children are then made to feel like they owe the gang and that they repay them, that they particularly owe this person after everything that person's done for them or bought for them. These gangs know exactly what they're doing. They're organised groups who make a lot of money from their illegal activities. You can see some pictures here from a campaign and you can see that the victims aren't just girls. That can, This can happen to young men as well. So just to focus on the writing on those, because I appreciate it's quite small. On the face of the young lady, you've got, I didn't want to but my boyfriend asked me to be nice to his friends. In this context, that means he's basically said she needs to sleep with his friends as a way to repay some of the things that he's done for her or bought for her. He's manipulated her, he's made her feel safe, he's made her feel loved, and now he's pressuring her into having sex with random men. In the middle one, he phones me and emails me every day. He says he loves me. This is exactly the kind of thing that they will say to young people to try and draw them in. You could be looking at a 30 year old man with a 13 year old girl and he's saying he loves her and she feels really special and she feels really wanted. If somebody's phoning you and emailing you every day, OK, that's fair enough. But if they're phoning you multiple times a day every day, if they're texting you all the time, if they always want to know where you are, there might be some red flags there. Why do they need that level of control? And the young man at the end, he always pays my fare. He must think I'm special. That's exactly what these people want you to think. They are organised criminals. They know what they're doing. They want you to feel special. They want you to feel loved. Here we have some newspaper headlines about stories regarding CSE. While it is a fact that a lot of the groups that have been found and put on trial for their crimes, they were large groups of Asian men. However, that does not mean that it is only Asian men that perpetrate this kind of violence against children. There have been lots and lots of other examples that for some reason don't seem to make the newspapers as much. Perhaps it doesn't sell as many newspapers. So you've got worst ever child abuse scandal exposed. Hundreds of young girls raped, beaten, sold for sex, and some even killed over 40 years, but authorities failed to act. It is a fact that this has been happening for a long time and authorities have been too slow to act on this. If you go to the one in the top right, nine guilty of grooming white girls of 13 for sex, and then you've got the bit underneath that says there were 47 victims, 77 years for sex beasts. Some of these headlines refer to a scandal that happened in Rotherham, where young ladies were being abused over a period of time. 
The police at that time had absolutely no idea how to deal with the situation. They weren't trained. The prosecutors weren't trained. They didn't fully understand what child sexual exploitation was. However, when these young girls were reporting it, they either weren't being believed or the attitude was, well, they probably deserved it. You know, look at what they're wearing. That's totally unacceptable. We can never victim blame. It is the people who are committing these crimes who are to blame. CSE can also happen online. Any kind of sexual abuse can happen online. So one in three internet users worldwide are children. So that's an excellent platform for people who want to abuse children or who want to manipulate them. If somebody starts talking to you online that you don't know or starts looking to add you on social media, please be extremely careful. Ask yourself, why does this person want to add me? What is the point? In 2019, a cyber tip line received 16.9 million reports related to child sexual exploitation. These reports contain 69.1 million videos, images and files. It could be that these gangs are asking for images and that they're then going to hold you to ransom with it. So they want images sent in online of you naked or in a compromising position. And then unless you do what they say, they're going to expose these pictures to your friends, family and the whole Internet. There are lots of places that victims can get help. If you would like to know some of these resources, you can ask your teachers for a copy of this PowerPoint. You can also Google help for victims of CSE. Childline is an excellent place to start. They may need to signpost you to another organisation, but they are a great starting point. OK, so now we'll move on to talk about female genital mutilation or FGM. This is where a female's genitals are deliberately altered or removed for non-medical reasons. It's also known as female circumcision or cutting, but it does have many other names. It's illegal in this country. It's also illegal to take somebody out of this country to have it done. Now, this is very different to male circumcision. There are lots of reasons, some of them health related, why men have their foreskin removed, especially at a young age. For men, it can be an issue of hygiene, an issue of cleanliness, and a lot of different cultures remove the foreskin from the boys at a young age. It can also be done later if necessary. However, there is no medical reason at all why a female should have her genitals altered or cut. That's why it's illegal. So you've got a diagram there of a woman's genitals. At the top, you've got the clitoris. So that's kind of like a little pyramid shaped bump. And when a woman is sexually excited, it fills with blood and it becomes really sensitive. Some cultures that practice FGM completely remove that. The problem with that is because it's full of a lot of blood vessels, it could cause extremely heavy bleeding and it could lead to death. Some women will have their vagina sewn partially shut. This makes it extremely difficult when she's on her period. It will make sex extremely difficult and extremely painful. And it could be life threatening for her and her child during childbirth. For a lot of women, it is not noticed that they've experienced FGM until they are giving birth. And unfortunately, then it can be too late to do anything to help them. It's a form of child abuse. It's really dangerous. It is a criminal offence. We know that there's no medical reason to carry out FGM whatsoever. It's often performed by somebody who has no medical training. They might use instruments such as knives, scalpels, scissors, glass or razor blades. Children are rarely given any kind of anaesthetic or antiseptic treatment and they're often forcibly restrained. They are literally held down while this is happening to them. Using these methods and without the antiseptics, it could cause serious infections, which could cause further problems for the young woman. Some cultures believe that it's used to control female sexuality. 
However, it can cause long lasting damage to physical and emotional health. So as we've previously said, there's no health benefits to it whatsoever. It can cause you serious harm. It can cause some women severe and or constant pain, regular infections, or infections such as tetanus, HIV, hepatitis B and C. If you're being cut with glass and you're not being given any kind of antibiotic or antiseptic, it's likely to cause infections. There will be pain and difficulty having sex. It could lead to some women becoming infertile and not being able to have children. It can cause changes to bleeding. There could be cysts or abscesses that form. It can cause difficulties urinating for women or it can cause them to lose the ability to control urination and make them become incontinent. It can cause internal organ damage. There might be problems during pregnancy and childbirth, which can be life threatening to both. It can cause mental health problems such as depression. They may have flashbacks like PTSD. And some women do self harm as a result of this. And ultimately, they could die from the blood loss or infection that they experience during the process. So those most at risk are from communities where it is already practised. Sometimes somebody is brought into the UK to perform it as a ceremony. And other times girls are taken out of the country to have it done elsewhere. The Home Office has identified girls and women from certain communities as being more at risk. However, that does not mean that every Somali girl has undergone FGM. Equally, it does not mean that every girl from Egypt has undergone FGM. It means that it is more prevalent in those countries. It happens more in those countries. Children are also at a much higher risk if it's already happened to their mother, sister or another family member. Some cultures believe that they should do this. It is a ceremony. They make a big deal out of it. The girl is finally a woman once she has had this happen to her. You can see in some countries in Europe, there are a significant number of survivors. At the time this um, diagram was made, it was estimated that there were 137,000 women in the UK who had survived an FGM procedure but we're obviously living with those significant after effects. Now, obviously those figures change depending on the size of the country, but they are quite staggering numbers of women that have experienced this and will go on to need long lasting support, whether that's mental health or physical health support. You can get up to 14 years in prison for carrying out FGM or for helping it to take place. So if you are the parent of a child who has taken them out of the country to have FGM done, you could be looking at 14 years in prison. There are lots of support systems around FGM. There are national FGM clinics that are run by the NHS. There's Forward UK and there's the NSPCC FGM helpline. If you feel at risk, please get support. I know it can be really scary, it can be really difficult, but this could change your life. For you to stand up and say, I think this is going to happen to me, that could have a very positive impact on your life. If you know of other people, your friends perhaps, that this may be happening to, or you feel this may be happening to, please also call one of those organisations and get them the help they need. Of course, there's other places where you can get general support. The NHS and Childline have lots of information about FGM. West Yorkshire Police would obviously step in because it is a criminal offence. And Step 2, James and Hale have been working collaboratively in schools in Bradford to deliver sex and relationships education. So you could always contact them and ask for support. If you Google them, you'll be able to find it. Or you can see that Step 2 has a number of social media handles that you will be welcome to contact them on.